Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? I'm excited to be with all of you again today. And this week, we're going to be talking about do foods really make you feel better? Hmm. I was really wanting to do some research looking a little bit more at this, looking at, hmm, is it all psychological? Is it physiological? Is there a combination of these two? And so I'm really excited to be discussing with all of you what is going on with food? How does it really impact your mood, your frame of mind? Does it really make you feel better? Or do you just think that it's making you feel better when you eat it? So I'm really excited to be with all of you today. And I'm really wanting to help you. And I'm trying to see why I can't see um, your comments again. I'm telling you. I like to see all your comments. It always makes me feel so happy to see all your comments. Um, but it's not showing me them. Let me just see if I can see. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know why, but I can't see your comments, but that's okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, Marnet then within.com. You can email me and let me know. So let's start talking about what I was learning, what I've learned, what I want you to know about does food really have an, uh, um, an impact on your mood. And so when we look at food, we know that there are neuro con there are neural connections that happen between neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are what sends information. And we have a few that have an impact on mood. So it appears. So it seems like there's a few. We've got serotonin, which is released. It's that feel good chemical that we feel oftentimes when we have things like carbohydrates or sugars. That's the thing that sort of creates this antidepressant state inside of our body. So yes, we can feel that with both carbohydrates and sugars. The other thing that's important to know is that we have a neurotransmitter called GABA. And this is often referred to as nature's volume. It's the calming, numbing out, relaxing effect. And that can also be elicited with certain types of food. What's interesting though, is that yes, we can have this response from certain types of foods, certain carbohydrates, sugar, and whatnot. But then I want you to be paying attention to, is this actual physical or is this emotional in nature? Are you actually able to physically feel the difference? Or are you linking up comfort foods with a past experience, with joy, with relaxing, with numbing out. And I think when we look at these two different areas and we look at the brain and neurotransmitters effect on the brain, and we also look at the impact food has on us from a psychological standpoint, from what we think it does, we have to be very aware and careful of these two because it's not 100% clear and every single one of you is going to have a different response depending on your history, what you've linked up. If let's say your grandmother's cookies, which my grandmother made delicious cookies and she'd store them in big Folgers you know, coffee jars. And I just remember having those cookies and just being like, oh, delicious. And so if I have a cookie like that, yes, it might elicit some neurochemicals in my brain, but it also brings me back to being loved by my grandmother, to being nurtured and loved. And so I think it's important to be aware of what is actually happening to you. Where is this physiological and where is this psychological? 
And I would say the impact on a psychological standpoint is way more important and impressive in terms of turning to food. If you link up that a certain food is going to make you feel a certain way, or you're craving a certain feeling, and you're using food to feel a certain way, that's where I want you to be really aware of. That's where I would spend more of your time shifting, looking at, and developing an understanding inside of that craving and inside of that desire to look at how can you expand your desires for whatever you're hunting for, that you're using food for, find it in other ways. How can you find more joy, comfort, love, if that's what you're turning to food for? How can you find the companionship? How can, if you find yourself eating because you're lonely or bored or tired and you want to feel better, and you know what's so interesting about being tired? Is that the chemical, let me look here, I wanted to make sure that I'm right for you, that GABA and serotonin can really improve sleep and mood. And so if I'm tired and you're experiencing that you're tired, I used to think, oh my goodness, I'm so tired. I feel like I need food. Well, no wonder. Don't make yourself wrong. Wow, that was something that was pretty intuitive inside of my body. I was looking for something. The issue is, is that sometimes in that tired state, when we're looking for an energy boost, we turn to something that's going to give us a boost and then a crash. And so we're going to be on this up and down cycle instead of finding foods that work well for our bodies, and that's unique to you, but finding foods that satiate us and level us out so that we continue to have good energy. So if you're finding your moods being up and down and you're finding your energy being up and down, one of the things I want to encourage you to look at is the impact certain foods that you're having is having on your energy. Because for what I what I've also was really interested in, in reading is that your brain is mostly fat, right? We know this. We know your brain is mostly fat. But your brain is made up of DHA. The fat in your brain is made up of DHA. What else is made up of a lot of DHA? Fish and shellfish. Now, if you're a vegetarian, I totally get it. Vegan, totally get that. But if you're not and you go, there has been studies that I was reading that have found that having less, not having this, this fish or shellfish can create a depressive effect. And so if you are feeling like your brain isn't quite sharp, you're losing some neural connections, you're losing the sharpness that you once may have had, I want to encourage you to look at fish as an option in your meals so that you can get good quality fats and good quality protein and this combination could be miraculous for your brain neural connections and for your energy it can be really really helpful and it's one of the things that when we look at the food mood connection certainly we're seeing that there is a connection but there's also an emotional mood. And so I don't want to leave either one of these out because it's so important to this process to really be hunkering down and understanding these two things. So if you're finding that, wow, I never have fish, or I used to have fish and I used to feel so good, or wow, I'm feeling kind of depressed and a little bit blah, the National Institute of Health found that by increasing levels of of fish into your body, good quality fish, then what happens is, is we're, they see an increase in that feel good GABA hormone too. And so I want you to be aware of that. And I want you to be aware that DHA is in your brain, that it's made up of DHA makes up your brain. And that's the fat that needs more fat if you're starting to feel like the neural connections that you're having are dwindling. Um, and lastly, when we look at just kind of hormones, and then we'll talk about some of this good stuff around your brain and emotions, the last thing I wanted you to know is that 
um, ghrelin, ghrelin. So ghrelin is that hormone that tells you that you're hungry, okay? And I was like, I wanted to know, does ghrelin, and for feeling into hunger, so much of my work is looking at feeling into this hunger, feeling into what that does. And I was thinking, does that make you depressed to feel into that? Does that make you happy? What happens in that hunger hormone? Turns out, you all are gonna love me, turns out that when you listen to hunger, that increases ghrelin, right? You feel this ghrelin. This ghrelin hormone starts to build up as you feel hunger, and it builds and builds and builds up in your brain. And that actually has a, um, a uh, antidepressant type of, of effect on your brain. So the good news is, is that as you know with me and looking at naturally thin people and looking at how they relate to food in their bodies and whatnot, they all shared with me that hunger was a big piece of why they turned to food. And so here's the cool thing. Not only is turning to hunger, listening to hunger, so great for your body. It's also so good for your brain. It's also so good for your mood. So who knew that waiting for hunger, feeling that inside of your body and inside of your brain, because your brain has to signal your body and it's making this beautiful loop signaling your stomach and your body, hey, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, that you don't need to panic when you feel that hunger that it's actually really good for your body giving you an antidepressant effect. So the question is, does food really make you feel better? We got a mixed bag here. There's a yes from a neurotransmitter standpoint, some trans neurotransmitters, and there's also a yes from a mood standpoint, a psychological standpoint. And so when, we're, when we know this information, the best thing I can encourage you to do is separate your physical world from your emotional world. We know that the naturally then do this so beautifully. How do we do this? How do we separate your physical from your emotional? Well, if you're emotionally needing things, what I want you to start doing is this. Let's just do this. I want you to notice today, when you start to look for food, what are you looking for the experience to be? Okay, when you're deciding on food for lunch or dinner, or, or you start noticing your desire for food, and you're just kind of thinking about, ooh, what do I want? I want you to notice, where is this desire coming from? What is the desire? What's the end game, everybody? What's the end game? How are you wanting to feel? Is it purely, oh, I just want to get rid of my hunger? Or are you using food to feel a certain way? And if you're using food and you notice, oh, I'm using food to up my energy. Okay, then the next question I want you to ask yourself is this. How can I get the best quality foods in my body that will psychologically and physiologically satisfy me? How can I get those? What are those foods that are going to give me that energy, that are going to give me that stamina, that are going to help me improve the way I feel? And from that vantage point, I want you to notice what food choices you make. Are they the same or are they different? When we come at things from a different vantage point, when we come at it instead of just like, oh, craving, gotta have it, and we come from it from an intellectual pursuit, a physiological pursuit, when we come at it using the brain in a different way, and especially it's early in the day, it's easier to come at this, so this is when it's really, really good for you to do this, because as we know that a lot of times emotional eating happens later on. But if you can come from the standpoint and this vantage point where you are asking yourself, what am I looking to feel after this meal? Satiated, full, energized, uh, stress relief. We start to see then where it's physiological 
and then where it's psychological. And I want all of you to be aware of what camp you're hanging out in. Where is this desire for food coming from? A psychological need or a physiological need? And then when you understand that, that's the first question. The second part of this is then starting to look at, okay, I've addressed this. I know I'm trying to get this physical or psychological need. What's the best food to help me achieve that? That will feel good both in my body and for my body and for my mind. Okay, so for my body, for my mind. Because if you struggle, like I have with emotional eating, we know that there's an emotional component, no question, with food, no question. And so that psychological piece has to be addressed. A meal for me, if I just have salad and it doesn't have any taste or texture and I'm just eating the lettuce, I will not be psychologically satisfied and I'll go hunting. And many of you are in that same camp. And so that's why I know if I want to have a salad, great. But maybe I'll put now some more salmon on there. <laughs> maybe I know since I want to have all that yummy, good DHA. I'm going to add some salmon on there. That tastes good to me. And then for me, I would like to have lots of like, I want it interesting and I want it to feel tasty and, and good. So it's not enough that food just be good for you, which we know from a neural connection and neurotransmitter standpoint that that does have an impact on how you feel. But I also want it to be psychological. So we need both psychological and physiological. Okay. So let's approach food this week in a new way where you're looking at the end. You're looking at what am I trying to get out of this meal? The only thing that naturally thin people shared with me that they are trying to get out of a meal is to dissipate their hunger and they want it to taste good. And they want it to feel good inside of their body. Like they're not going to eat foods that make them tired and feel like crud. They're just not. When they have so many other choices and there's no, there's no, they don't put any um, lid on their choices. There's to so many options. That's what they're trying to get out of the experience. To be satiated because they're hungry. To have something that feels good in their body and psychologically is satisfied. So I want you to approach your meals now in this way. And I can't wait to hear and see, and uh, you'll have to all tell me how it is going to work out for you, how this works for you. How does it make you feel? How does it make you look? How do you experience food? Now, I apologize. I don't know if Facebook is doing something different, why I can't see all of your um, posts. Um, it's a bummer. But let me just real quickly, I told you all you can go pop into, um, you can email me at marnatthinwithin.com and I can see any messages or emails or posts that you have. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Let me just look through here too and just see if I can, oh, I can see that you all have commented, but why can't I see it? Hold on. I can see. And see that there are comments I just can't see y'all I can't see them how annoying is that I love seeing you all I love oh there you are how weird it's so weird when Facebook makes these changes now I can see you all hi everybody now I can see your comments yay they're in a totally different place now well gotta love Facebook for always changing things up for me so let me ask you if you any of you have questions do any of you have questions about really looking at this from a different vantage point and seeing this in a way where you can both come at food from a psychological and physiological vantage point? Because that's where these things need to be. When we know that, yep, these, neuro, these neurotransmitters make us look and feel amazing, too, they can elevate our mood or not having, like I was saying, not having 
something like DHA can decrease our mood. But then we also know that if you're an emotional eater, we've got to be willing and open to saying, okay, I can have these really great quality foods. And I heard somebody say, God, you know, I just don't want to eat salads for the rest of my life. I was like, why do you feel like you have to eat salads? Oh, because that's gonna they're low caloric and they're gonna make me help me lose weight. Yeah, but you can have salads and you can make them good. You can eat healthy and it can be tasty. Watch your thinking, everybody, when you think that you have to remove the pleasure from meals. The pleasure is something I want. It's the thing that you're looking for as part of the meal experience. And so let's not let that go. Let's not give your power away to that. Let's be aware that that is part of what you're looking for and what you're needing. And so let's make that part of your meal experience. So watch when you tell yourself that there's something you have to give up. Maybe you go, oh, I would like to reduce the sugar, but here's how I can have it in a way that works for my weight loss goals. Okay, a lot of times with diets, we go very into, let's give up everything. Let's let go of everything. Let's give up whole food groups. Why? Why do we have to give up whole food groups when we can, when so much of this is the blending of our emotional world and our mental world with our physical desire for food and our enjoyment? I don't want to take away enjoyment from any of you. I really don't. So I think we all have a great opportunity here to step into looking at the end of the meal. How do you want to feel? How do you want, what are you looking for that meal experience to be? And if you notice that this is purely, purely emotional, then that's when I want you to then stop, wait to have the food and look at, wow, How can I give myself what I really am looking for? What's another way? Don't make your desire for food wrong. Please don't do that. See how brilliant our brains are? We can say, brilliant brain, that is one option, but here's a different option. And that different option, when you start practicing it, that's what will help you lose weight. That's what will take weight off when you recognize, wow, I'm purely looking for emotional release here. I'm purely looking to food. And it may be that you are looking to sugar. Well, now we know why, right? Now you know why that is. Because sugar does give you that natural antidepressant type of effect. But so does fish, (laughs) right? So does giving yourself some fish. But I'd much rather you address the emotional desire and craving that you have inside of that beautiful body of yours. Let's address it in that way by addressing the core of the issue. What do you really want? What's really the craving? What's really the need that happens at 4 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, at 2 o'clock in the morning? Let's address it there. And when you start believing in your ability to address it, when you start seeing that you can address it in a new way without having to turn to food, it builds your confidence, it decreases your weight, and that combination of building your confidence, seeing your weight go down is so motivating and inspiring, it helps you want to keep doing it. So if you have struggled with emotional eating, which for many of you, that's why you're here. (laughs) just like me, struggled with emotional eating, I want you to look at that. What are you trying to get out of your meal? That will help you start to really see where food is being put in the emotional camp, in the physiological camp, and then you can attack it from that vantage point. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening in. Let's go attack this in a very, very new, powerful way. I know it will change your body. I know it will change your life if you do this. And listen, if you haven't taken the free weight loss course, 
please step into an opportunity to take the free weight loss course or jump in if you'd like to go, hey, I really like seeing Marta. You can go over to my YouTube channel where you can see many of our favorite, uh, some of these favorite Facebook Lives. I just encourage you to keep staying in this conversation because it's so important to stay in. You got this. You can do this. Keep listening to your body. All right, everybody, sending you so much love, wishing you a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. 